back with a humble update and a Gucci bag. Now, why do I have a Gucci bag? Is it because I'm bad at budgeting? Maybe. Is it because I wanted a cool Instagram pic to impress someone that probably doesn't care about me or know I exist? Absolutely. But there's a story behind this. And let me tell you what it is. These are size 12 shoes. Picture it. I was standing outside for four hours in the cold and rain of Southern California just to get these. And when I get in, the guard takes your temperature, opens up the doors, there's an actual red carpet, people with champagne, there were acrobats, there was a lemur in the corner painting portraits. Insane. And I bought these. Now what are these? If you said very expensive Crocs, you'd be half right. These are a luxury sandal. And these also are very dirty because someone wore them to the beach today. But here's a problem with those sandals. If I wanted to sell them because I bought too many things like that and I couldn't pay my mortgage payment this month, the thing I would have right now to verify my ownership is this. This extremely detailed, dedicated, and foolproof card that says Gucci with nothing else in it. What good does that do me? So if I were to go and try to sell those shoes, people don't know me. People don't know that I ball out hardcore. All they have right now is that little tag. There's nothing else to verify the validity of that object. And that's a problem. And Brian Foote is trying to solve that problem with his latest iteration of Humble. On the Humble platform, they are launching a program that digitizes and tokenizes a luxury good. Now this can be really explosive in the industry. I think it's actually one of the best products or services that they have brought to market as of yet. There is a huge need for it and it gives a luxury brand even more of a moat around itself if they were to use this. Basically the play is this. Those sandals right there, beach dirt and all, would be tokenized and there would be a ledger, almost like a blockchain currency. And this ledger would show you the materials sourced for this product. They would show you the logistics. It would show you the production. And then it would also verify the sellers and the buyers for who's ever touched those sandals. It is a brilliant iteration and integration of Humble. And we're gonna go over that today from the Ford's article that just dropped. Okay, so once again, coming at you with a TSNP, which is now humble. I need to stop saying TSNP. That's out of vogue, that's out of fashion. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. I am not a financial advisor. Also, we have a Patreon going on, so jump on over there and hit me up. Gonna be launching uh, everything there first and bringing a ton of value. So I wanna go to Brian Foote's page, and as we know, Brian Foote is the CEO of Humble. Now, this is exactly, exactly, exactly what I've been talking about, especially in the last TSNP Humble video that I posted. And what I said was that we're gonna be seeing, I should just actually pull a clip, but what I did actually say is that we will be seeing Brian teaming up with things that are trending and using and utilizing this business model to go into a lot of different verticals. And Brian just did something which I thought is so brilliant on this one and he is tokenizing luxury fashion so let's actually look at it because it came from a forbes article well it didn't come from a forbes article but a forbes article covered brian foot's clever little move that he did and he said real pick slash credit should be of humble marketplace team led by Jeannie, Adam, Veronica, Aaron, Nicole, uh, working 24 seven on this and putting up with me. We're gonna have to definitely find who funds Humble and who has funded Humble. And I will probably look into the corporate structure again um, with some more information coming at you. As we know, the last update I did was him uh, tokenizing and jumping into the sports space. But this one, is another brilliant, brilliant move. I really can't articulate how brilliant I think that he is with getting his business model into so many news stories, into so many different verticals, into so many different industries, and it's just so smart. Basically, as you saw in the introduction that I did to this video, there are luxury goods that 
no one really knows if they are actually luxury goods. There's a ton of, there's massive knockoff markets. And according to the website in 2021, the luxury global fashion industry is at $107.9 billion, which is insane. The robust market segmentation has achieved those promising numbers during the year of the pandemic. We know that. More importantly, the market segmentation is expected to grow at, let's just say, around 5%, which is huge. Major policy changes facing the luxury fashion industry are something to be of note and to look at. And the most important thing that is kind of the enemy to this industry is counterfeiting. There's plenty of websites, plenty of places online that you can go and buy knockoff goods. I found myself in China one time on the streets of Hong Kong doing God knows what. There, I decided to pick up a sweatshirt and I was awful and terrible. And uh, allegedly, this was a knockoff brand sweatshirt that I bought for 60 bucks and it was exact same as the one that was a thousand dollars. Anyway, the problem with these companies right here, basically uh, LVMH and Caring, they, they own all of, or the majority of, they have a portfolio of luxury brands. They are constantly finding these counterfeiters. So there's really two people that dominate this entire space. So as you can see, um, I don't know that we're Caring, but did y'all know that actually two two main companies hold or like umbrella companies for all these brands for Gucci, Saint Laurent, uh, Balenciaga, Alexander McQueen, all these other things I don't know. So this is one of the massive umbrella companies. And then LVMH, as we know, uh, owns a slew of brands as well. Here are the houses um, part of the website, which is the way rich people say business holdings, I guess. Um, everything from watches to jewelry to uh, cosmetics, perfumes, fashion, leather goods, and they have Tiffany's in there. They have uh, Fendi, Celine. So they really do dominate the entire space. The revenue for these groups are massive. And the big problem is because there's so much demand for these and they are so price prohibitive in a lot of different ways. They don't have a multi-tiered structure like my Patreon does. You know, Patreon has three tiers. If you're someone that uh, doesn't want to spend a lot of money, we can still access it. If you want to spend a lot more money, you can access it. So it's accessible to all. So go join the Patreon. But this is not a Patreon. And so most of their brands are not accessible to everybody. And that's what makes it valuable in their eyes. Well, of course, a lot of different things. We have craftsmanship, we have brand, we have everything else. For the most part, it's a supply and demand thing and it's very expensive to get in. That creates a secondary market in economics. And what a secondary market is, obviously, would be a knockoff market where you have people that want to buy these goods that can't purchase them at the regular retail price. So they're going uh, secondhand, if you will, not secondhand necessarily, but they're going knockoff. Actually, in order to keep this exclusivity, uh, mass massive brands have actually burned some of their product and uh, that didn't go over too well with the public, as you can imagine, but they definitely did. This is an article chronicling all the all the brands that uh, that did that. So you can check that out later. But this is when Brian Foote steps in. To solve the problem, our fashion devil wears Prada type savior here. So <laughs> he is introducing a new product line called Origin Assurance. And I think that this is one of his most clever plays yet. What Origin Assurance does and is doing is targeting some of the challenges that may hinder the projected growth of the global fashion industry. Basically, it's tokenizing these luxury fashion articles of clothing or any kind of things that the brand makes and putting them on the blockchain. He's teaming up with Smalls and Riskind, which I'm not unfamiliar with, to tokenize and catalog exclusive prints on the blockchain, ensuring the customers receive a certificate of authenticity and a digital signature QR code for tracking the life cycle of any product. And I think that is so brilliant. He said, tokenizing luxury fashion on blockchain will create exciting opportunities for the high-end fashion industry and attract the young market. Young. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. I'm very attracted to this. I, I'm young-ish, relatively. Have a birthday coming up. Don't want to talk about it. The Humble Studios is where the tokenization of the luxury fashion items in FTs, physical and esoteric assets, will occur on the blockchain. In fashion, accessibility is essential for luxury brands to remain relevant. Smart luxury brands will leverage the web 
3's uh, support by blockchain to become accessible on both primary and secondary resale markets, particularly in luxury brands where there is a longer life cycle of collection. And that's really, really interesting because you have these other websites and these other secondary markets. Now I've finally appropriately used that term. You have these secondary markets like Poshmark and even eBay where people can go and sell these luxury items that they don't want or aren't needing or just don't have any use for anymore. Or if they were last season, I mean, who would be caught dead? So they can go do that. And now with this, instead of having your papers, which traditionally you would have, instead of having that, you have actually a digitized ledger, which is basically what the blockchain is. But I think this, honestly, I, I can't say enough about it because I think it's just one of the most clever integrations of Humble yet. And I think that this might be the thing that if I were to delve off into some speculation real quick, I think this might be the thing that if done right, if played right, will really put Humble more on the map. I know that it's very much on the map to us geniuses who are here really before the whole populace catches on. But I think that there is a tipping point where everyone else will catch on. And if they play this right, they can have brand integration. So they're basically starting off, you know, very small and doing kind of a test pilot. They, they do, and, and Humble does this a lot. They, they do kind of like a MVP, a, a minimum viable product. Is that what that stands for? Whatever. The, ca the case in point is they, they do what they can to launch kind of the concept. And then from there, they can go and see if it catches on to broader uh, markets. In this one, it's going to be interesting because it's almost a big hit or miss. You really have a monopoly in the market. So if he can sell to those two massive brands that we covered before that has everything or massive umbrella companies, then it's it. I mean, it's set. I think that's, that's game over. We're all rich. We go to a beach and just chill and relax. But that's going to be probably a long-term sales play since they are so massive and they do dominate the entire market. If he can if he can get that in, then Humble could just be a company digitizing luxury goods and could be done, you know, and then they could, you know, be listed on the NASDAQ, go public and, and call it a day. So this really is where I think Humble can explode. I think they have, of course, amazing other capabilities that they've launched as we know but this one really might be the one that's kind of sets fire to everything if played right so awesome on brian awesome on humble and the team like he shouted out on this one and i just think it's um amazing you're even seeing and for the first time in humble's history at least for the first time i've seen feel free to drop a comment and correct me if i'm wrong you're seeing uh other let's just say people in the know that really kind of the gatekeepers in academia you're seeing talk about this. They said uh, basically there was a, a Fashion Institute of Technology conference recently and the Associate Professor of Fashion Business Management Department at the Fashion Institute of Technology. That's a lot of words. That's a hell of a business card. He probably has like three or four of them that he just, anyway. Uh, the blockchain technology provides total transparency of product from inception to end use. The single technology can allow users to track and trace the legitimacy of any product from luxury fashion to basic necessity. In doing so, the blockchain can cover a variety of corporate consumer and social goals, including sustainability, sourcing, identifying the source of all merchandise along the supply chain, and further advancement of trust between brands and their numerous stakeholders. I mean, absolutely. So Luca Spano, director of IFG Men's Fashion, had to say it's a very part of many business this is a very important part of many businesses already. And it must for us all to implement rather sooner than later. And that makes sense too. It almost makes these brands more exclusive by having the history of the product too it actually builds a brand around just the item which is uh super cool which is kind of how it is and how it's supposed to work you know if everything was being traded in these luxury items you know properly they're supposed to have a story right they're supposed to have a history to them but uh now that this would be implemented it would really set up a, a moat a barrier even more so to these to these brands and companies. Just congrats on that. I mean, he really is perfectly suited for this space and just doing a great job on implementing this really, really quickly and really efficiently. So good job to the team, good job for the PR, and they are just absolutely crushing it. Make sure you watch the former TSNP and Humble video I did yesterday, I think, and I will link that below and check back to the channel because we are bringing you value, we are bringing you fashion, we are bringing you entertainment, we are bringing you stocks and money. Like what more can you want, guys and girls?
there is a small section of my demographic that are actually girls. So happy to have you. There's a story behind these shoes. Oh, shit.